blessed days and the dark secret night and I think to myself what a wonderful Meredith had been best friends with a girl since she was real little and uh, when they got to about eighth grade they sort of had a parting of ways and I think Meredith was really sad and heartbroken over losing that friendship and that's when I thought to myself what could I do to help? My mom had noticed that I was going through a hard time and she put a big glass bowl of quotes um, on my desk in my bedroom and asked me to pick one quote from it every day when I woke up. 
And so I ignored the bold quotes for maybe like a month. And then one day when I was feeling like exceptionally sorry for myself, I decided that I would pick a quote from the bowl just to see. And um, the quote that I read ended up completely changing my life. The words that I read were exactly what I needed to hear in that moment on that day. In the depth of the winter, I finally realized that within me there lay an invincible summer. And so I started doing it every single morning and I was taping them all across my walls and carrying them with me in my pocket. There were just quotes everywhere. Ultimately, the quotes were exactly what Meredith needed. It's such a simple spiritual practice. It's just a little slip of paper. But there's something about words that are so powerful that can touch something inside of us that can shift your perspective. And I did see that. I saw that brightness in Meredith come back. And then something else started to happen, which was interesting, is that not only did the quotes help Meredith, but then Meredith loved helping other people together we decided to package these little jars with just like 30 quotes that were my favorite quote. I started giving them to kids at school and eventually people started emailing me from different states saying that they want 10. They heard about them from their cousins who go to school with me. And so we started mailing them to people and it just started spreading. It's amazing to me how many how many people's lives we've touched. Have received hundreds of letters from people all over the country. There was a uh, a boy who was suicidal, and said that these slips of paper were the only hope in his life every day. If you read a quote and you want it to help you, I think that it can. And because of that, they have affected so many people across the whole country. Sam, can I ask you a question? No. What brings you joy? Nothing. <laughs> what brings you joy? Puddle! <laughs> joy is an essential part of my life. It's found in the quiet moments of connection with loved ones, the feeling of warm sunlight on my face during a walk with my husband, and the sparkle I see in my clients' eyes when they come up with a creative and exciting idea. Joy is present in the laughter shared with friends, a few minutes spent with our lovely puppy Happy, the simple pleasures of savoring a good cup of coffee, and the beauty of a sunset that paints the sky with vibrant colors. It's in those moments of genuine connection, self-expression, and appreciation for life's small wonders that I find my joy. Ultimately, joy is my compass, guiding me toward what truly matters and infusing every aspect of my life with a sense of fulfillment and gratitude. Hi, I'm Craig Williamson, a friend of the 360 Nation. What does joy mean to me? To me, joy is found when having an overall balance in life, one of peace and contentment. This balance being maintained when life is punctuated by moments of happiness. Here are some of my moments of happiness. Having the sun kiss my face as it first lifts from the horizon, spending time with our children. Being outside, enjoying the changing seasons, from the first bird calls and the first leaves of spring until the last bird migrates and the trees drop the last of their colorful leaves. The warm and loving smiles, hugs, kisses, and hand-holding walks with Epec, my wife. Listening to music can prompt beautiful memories and get me singing and dancing. The ex expectations for new sports seasons and the excitement of the games. Exercising. Mystery novels or movies where I am challenged to solve who done it, watching a puppy play, cuddling a, a puppy after play, a pleasant feeling of tiredness from a day well spent, a beautiful setting of the sun until it fades from my view, and a good night's sleep. 
thank you for this opportunity to share. Peace and cheers. What sparks my joy? Joy is our birthright, yet it's become so intangible, mysterious and elusive a feeling to many of us in this very sharply divided world. But know and trust this, that in spite of the vast cultural differences we humans feel, we feel joyful about similar things, the bubbles, the rainbows, the cherry blossoms, the sprinkles on ice cream cones. Now, most women I know wear a little sparkle, some on their dress, and I would like to think that mine is in my eyes and that sparkle most of the time because I do see magic around me and it makes me want to spark my joyful existence even more. What is required though for many of us is the, is the courage to tolerate joy without self-sabotage and I guess it's time to shift that crap in life and start being more joyful. I wish you all a life of love that matters, a joyful existence. So don't be afraid to sparkle a little brighter. Hey guys, my name is Amanda Lindsay and I am here for Joy Fest 2024. So the big question is, what sparks my joy? And that is real simple, guys. It is spreading joy to other people. There is nothing in the world like a huge smile or a nice big bear hug or, of course, that universal, hey, what's up? Head nod. Anyhow, smiling, hugs, the head nod, fist bumps, air hugs, all of it. It is pure magic. And the main reason is because happiness and joy are just so contagious. Nothing like walking into a room, flashing those pearly whites, and having people all over smile right back at you. Because you know what? Acknowledging people brings joy. So that smile, that hug, that head nod, says, hey, I see you, I hear you, I want to know you, I want to say hello. So that's how the joy cycle starts. Give a hug, give a smile, and you know what? That person that received it is going to most likely do the same thing. That high vibe just keeps on multiplying as time goes on. So, want to know me? Plain and simple, what brings me joy, bring joy to other people. If I can bring a smile to your face, I've done a wonderful thing and I've, I've made my own day. So, just remember, smiles, wonderful, hugs, absolutely. Universal head nod, hey, what's up? Brings joy all over the world. So, that's about all I got. Happy Joy Fest, everybody. Hugs and smiles. So what sparks joy for me? You know, when I, when I think about that, I don't think about the big things. I think about these little things, seemingly inconsequential things, things that are so small that we often overlook them in the rush of life. You know, I think of, Toes in the sand, watching the waves roll in, feeling the warmth of sun and the cool breeze on my skin. I think of curling up with a great book on a lazy, rainy Sunday afternoon. I think of the knowledge that I made somebody's day better with a smile or with a shoulder or an ear. That feeling of accomplishment you get when you reach a goal you set for yourself. I think of the laughter of children playing because there's like, that sound is the best sound in the world. I think about clean sheets. I think about a cup of coffee and the sound of birds before the sun even rises. An unexpected text that simply says, I'm thinking about you today. Or a brand new journal. Or 
the smell of freshly cut grass. And I think about how all of these little things bring so much joy. It's like life is made up of countless snapshots in time, moments and memories that are woven together to create this extraordinary and unique tapestry of each of us. But I submit that it is these small moments, these little things that are like the glue that stitch the tapestry together. And sometimes even the smallest of things can turn a bad day around. It has been said that if we can find a way to slow down, stand still for a moment, and really take in everything around us, we would be happier human beings. I believe that to be true. And I invite you to give it a try. What do you have to lose? One, two, three. So what brings me joy? Um, Basically, I like I like making things, creating things, making things for other people that they that brings them joy. Like if you take this skein of yarn and crochet or knit, and it ends up with something like my little bunny with her removable dress and shoes, and that brings joy to um, kids and adults alike. My little deer, um, my necklace, um, just that kind of thing. I just like making things and, and keeping my fingers flexible and keep keeping my brain working. So that's what really, I guess, brings me joy. And I like cooking. That usually brings my joy, me joy unless I have to do it all the time <laughs> and then it's not so joyful but doing things for other people and making things that that give joy to others hello from sunny tampa florida i'm mariah edgington and i'm byron edgington from mandate to elevate to elevate thank you dennis and ollie and everyone at biz catalyst 360 for the opportunity to tell why we're joyful today and every day. Yes, thanks to you two and all the rest of you for the joy you bring to everyone in so many ways and for your dedication to doing it for good. I'm joyful every day for the abundance and opportunities surrounding us and for the positive attitude that allows me to recognize joy for what it is a remarkable reality that we never take for granted. I'm joyful for something that I recently realized and have just begun sharing. I'm neurodivergent with traits that once made me different and strange to my schoolmates and family. As a child, I was bullied and called a weirdo. So now I'm joyful to be in a community of people who accept me as I am and where I always feel safe. You know, that gives me joy as well because it confirms the attraction that brought me to this community and the loving embrace that Mariah and I have both experienced here. The many offerings found in this warm and welcoming community provide something for everyone and they all lead to a joyful experience. We've both long believed that this is how the wider world needs to be. So it gives us joy to find others who share that belief, others who help me belong. That's absolutely true. Years ago, a professional we consulted advised us that there are only two requirements in life. To breathe and to find joy. It appears that we've arrived at just the right place. So my friends, breathe. Find joy and, and joy journey well. well. Let me share the gift of joy with all of you. Ye hasta hua karivan zindagi ka na poochho chala hai kithar Tamanda hai ye saath chalte rahe hum na bite kabhi ये सफर ये हंसता हुआ 
कारवा जिंदगी का न पूछो चला है किधर तमन्ना ही साथ चलती रहे हम न बीते कभी ये सफर सो लेट अस ट्रैवल द जर्नी ऑफ जॉय यू आर सोर्स ऑफ जॉय आई एम सोर्स ऑफ जॉय वी ऑल आर सोर्स ऑफ जॉय लेट अस लिव टुगेदर जॉयफुल लाइफ लव यू ऑल Hello. I've been talking to Ted here about what brings us joy. Before I answer the question though, I thought it might help for you to know that he and I come from a long line of teachers, trainers, coaches, helpers, school workers, etc. And what brings us joy, we've concluded is that aha moment or that penny dropping moment that we can all have when we learn something new and it leaves us in awe it leaves us with a sense of wow hadn't thought of it like that and it changes lives so that is what brings me and Ted and all the other family members going back across generations who've been in the education world joy thank you hello i'm mark reed this is my wife what's your name haruka funase des here's the thing we did our list uh, independent we don't know what is on each other's list what's your number 1 seeing mark being happy and excited Okay, that's awesome. Okay, my first is uh the sunrise in the morning and uh the the quiet and the stillness. What's number 2? Laughter of our newborn nephew. Oh, yes. Okay. Auto auto kun. Uh my number 2 is a good cigar. This is what I knew that nobody else is going to like except me, but I don't care. It's what sparks my joy. I love having a good cigar. Number 3. A uh, smell of freshly baked bread. That is a good one. Uh my wife's laughter. That's my It's not this is not in order. I could have put that first, but that's number 3. Go ahead. Number 4. Yeah. Uh finding unexpected flower blooming in our garden. Nice. Mine it's being kind to someone who doesn't expect it. Number 5. Uh seeing my younger brother enjoying uh parenting. Nice. My number 5 is uh it does involve us again. It's dancing in the morning. Uh <laughs> I didn't th- I thought I would be the one to break out the moves. I didn't know that you would. I thought you'd be shy. But uh we usually do a little dance in the morning. I won't. I'll spare you from the entertainment. Number 6. Feeling of all life waking up in the mountain in early spring. There is something about living in the mountains. It's just more uh you can feel the life around us. All right, number 7. Receiving unexpected flowers. Wink wink. Yeah, yeah no problem. I got that one. Uh number 7 for me is a good fire. We have a fire pit outside and we don't use it often enough, but when we do, I love sitting around the nice fire. All right, number 8. Seeing any kind of miniature size object such as this microphone, a little <laughs> robots, cars, houses, tiny tiny things. Yeah, I think that's a Japanese thing maybe. Okay. Yes. Uh for me, my next one was discovering a new place and that could be that could be a country like when i go to a new country for the first time or it could be like a little ramen shop down an alley but, all right number 9 touch of a handmade japanese paper washi of course my number 9 is a happy animal it doesn't matter if it's a dog a donkey or a capybara i just i love seeing a happy animal number 10 um scent of fresh roses Oh, that's nice. I, I should have known that would be on there. My number 10 is ice cream. Okay. So what sparks joy for me? We're sitting in the same place. This is one of the things that sparks joy for me is being by the water. But what I've thought about a lot since this question came up, what sparks your joy is that I realized that It is a spark. It is a moment that is not always invited in. But joy is that one thing that that shows up uninvited. 
when you least expect it. And that's the part of joy that makes it magical. I can give you an example. I was walking here by the water last week and I came face to face with a seagull. And in an instant, I'm staring at this magnificent creature and I look out and I see the water and the blue sky and this moment of joy just washed over me. Another example is when Wayne and I are walking down the street and we'll get to a crosswalk and very slowly he puts his hand in mine. And again, this wave of appreciation and joy that I have somebody that loves me the way that he does so tenderly and protecting of me. I'll look down on my phone and I'll see one of our kids' names on my phone that they're calling. Again, instant. It sparks. It's there. And you feel that joy. And inside that joy, I always give a breath of gratitude. So I think that's the invitation, is for all those moments of joy that you have, be sure and take that breath of gratitude that comes with it. You know, what brings me joy is the discovery since I retired, that before I retired, when I was working, life was all about my travels, my work schedule, all the routines that went along with that. And then after retirement, we enter as we live by the water, by the ocean, and we watch the sun as it moves in the horizon and the waves and the tides change every day. And you realize that the world is more of a rhythm than it is a routine. And so life for me now is very joyful and it, it's become a routine. And I embrace the rhythms of the day. We often wake up in the morning and just say, what would you like to create today? Not confined by routines, not that we don't have obligations, not that we don't have responsibilities, but when you go with the rhythms of what the day looks like and what the life looks like, then you create unreasonability. You create new conversations. You, you dive into things that you find challenging that you would never have done before. And that is so joyful. And I know I'm blessed to have that and to have a partner that enjoys it with me. And may you have a joyful year as well. Are you grateful for your voice? Are you grateful for your choice? Are you grateful for your body and your mind? Are you grateful for each day? Are you grateful, come with me? Are you grateful for everything divine? Yes, I'm grateful for my voice, and I'm grateful for my choice, and I'm grateful for my body and my mind. Yes, I'm grateful for each day, and I'm grateful, come what may. Yes, I'm grateful for everything divine. Are you grateful for your toes? Are you grateful for your nose? Are you grateful for your friends and family? Are you grateful for the earth? Are you grateful for your mirth? Are you grateful and joyful just to be? Yes, I'm grateful for my toes And I'm grateful for my nose And I'm grateful for my friends and family Yes, I'm grateful for the earth And I'm grateful for my mirth I am happy and grateful just to be Are you grateful for your eyes? Are you grateful for your thighs? Are you grateful for the sunshine and the sky? Are you grateful for your ears? Are you grateful for your peers? Are you grateful for each day that arrives? Yes, I'm grateful for my eyes And I'm grateful for my thighs And I'm grateful for the sunshine and the sky Yes, I'm grateful for my ears And I'm grateful for my peers Yes, I'm grateful for each day that arrives Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, May 1st. Yay, we made it. I've been thinking about um, what it means to have a joyful heart. And so I wanna share some personal thoughts that may or may not align with what you believe 
And yet the differences here is, I believe, um, the beauty in, in being different. And at the same time, the power is in, in you and me being able to accept the differences that everyone has. So again, beauty is in our differences, but the power is in the acceptance. So a joyful heart to fill is simply this, not being fixated on the things that I don't have, but having the, 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 the knowledge and the confidence um, that God is all powerful, all knowing and has full and complete authority. I think the other thing that I would say that's part of having a joyful heart is having gratitude. Gratitude for my family, my friends, for the participants on uh, the Friendship Bench and Salon 360, and, and just having gratitude for my mindset to be able to be, to participate in this behavioral science and this experiment that I call human resources that allows me uh, to be the person that I am. And it brings in my personality. It brings in all of the characteristics about me and who I am and how I deal with people. That's the real joy for me. And that is part of having a joyful heart. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my personal beliefs about having a joyful heart and make it a great day. Joy is to be found in a myriad of places. Being ever opportunistic, this is the first time we've tried marrying up our respective joys in bright sunshine on a frosty morning in February at a lovely bed and breakfast in Warwickshire. Jen is in her happy place, improvising dance with not a care in the world or a murmur about the challenge of heels on gravel. Learning to play the harp has been a lifelong dream of mine, which finally has license to fly. There's joy in every step of our journey through life, underpinned and affirmed by our charity Dance Syndrome, where the ethos of inclusion and equity is a given, where every person is respected and valued for who they are, because everyone matters. It's a basic human right. Jen and her dancing family are riding the crest of a wave, leaving a trail of happiness and positivity in their wake. Hi, and here I am to share what sparks my joy with my reddest lipstick possible. And you can see that it's about colour, it's about the sea, it's about being in the sunshine where we're in Australia um, in the middle of summer and I love to see all of the trees flourish and be fully green, full of flowers and I love to float in the ocean and I love to make a difference 
and a contribution through the work that I do. What sparks my joy is the possibility that collectively, as a community, we can collaborate, experiment and innovate in ways that are accountable and sustainable in making the world a much better and a much more peaceful and happier place. So for me, when I can be hopeful and optimistic and live my values and help people become the best versions of themselves, then I can be very joyful. So what sparks joy for me? It is actually laughter. <laughs> I absolutely love bringing laughter to my community as a certified laughter yoga teacher and as an improv comedy performer. It is my great joy to see people laugh and to help them feel better. So that's what sparks my joy. The art of joy making. I have been most conscious for decades of what brings me joy. The exuberant feeling of joy is something available to all of us, as it does not require another person or anything you can buy. I live in the Rocky Mountains, and the view outside my bedroom window is a sight to behold. Each morning when I awaken, I look out the window toward a dual mountain peak that is almost 14,000 feet. I behold this view of Mount Sopris with anticipation, for when the sun first kisses the powder-sugared snow-covered peak, the alpine glow emerges for a fleeting moment. As I breathe this sight in, my heart expands as a song of divine joy fills my soul. For 20 years, I have awakened to this view, and the art of joy making for myself it's about looking outside of myself for those glimpses of creation where my heart can sing once more. May you all find joy in every day. And thank you for listening. So I am just about to do something that brings me so much joy. You can kind of see here, I'm getting ready to teach belly dance. And belly dance has been in my life for over 15 years. Um, I found it after kind of a very traumatic time in my life and I had no idea that just shimmying my hips for just I don't know 30 seconds could bring me a ton of joy um, it awakens the divine feminine within my body it uh, aligned the seven major chakras it helped to illuminate those chakras I created belly dance meditation from it. I get to teach it. Um, it's so spirited and lovely and it brings me joy every single day. And this gorgeous morning, I get to go and I get to teach uh, about three classes today and just spread the joy. So if you're looking for more joy in your life, I would recommend movement and make that sacred movement something like belly dance. Yoga is also excellent for cultivating joy, bringing joy to you, because our bodies are alive with meaning, passion, um, information, and love. So do yourself a favor and just pay attention. Pay attention to your body, your heart, your stomach, your ears. The list can go on and on. Pay attention to your glorious body and your glorious self and honor it with just divine love. You are both human and divine and just the joy of your your life your sensuality your human divine presence all of that when you tap into that and connect to that it's endless amounts of joy thank you i've got joy 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 in my heart in my life i've got joy joy Oh, joy in my heart, in my life. Oh, no matter how dark the day is, I've got joy right at my fingertips. Oh, no matter how dark the day is, I've got joy right at my fingertips. <laughs> Joy, what sparks my joy? I'm Christy Kennedy Ward, owner of Queen Finance Global and 
the first thing that came to my mind was my poodle queenie she brings me so much joy and I'm often learning something from her. You know, every single time I open up the door, she's excited about going for a walk around the block, the same block that we walk 365 days a year. What a reminder to live from a place of exhilaration and not obligation. She sparks my joy. I dress up. When we were little girls, we would play dress up. And I don't think that you ever lose that inner child unless you forget about her. And so I want to keep her alive. And I love sparkles. I love painting my nails. It's the little sparks of joy that literally can lift my spirit on days when leadership gets heavy. Uh, you're in my home office and right now what's sparking my joy is aromatherapy. So I have plug-ins, the candle is burning, the candle wax everything in this room smells like a garden aromatherapy proves you know based on the research that it can boost our mood it can decrease stress and anxiety as someone who has lived through depression and who has had suicidal ideations everything i do i do it with intention i have 28 vision boards they spark my joy six vision books on those days that i'm living in the fog and i can hardly see my way out I go right to my books to remind me of what I said when I was grounded. Gratitude sparks my joy. This is one of my favorite gratitude journals. It's called the Gratitude Psychic Journal and it asks me specific questions about what message do I need to be reminded of today. You know, it brings me back to what am I grateful for? It gives me affirmation and then it gives me an action to do. So wherever you are, just remember, just like the waves, they come and they go. As long as we stay open, we can receive. And as long as we pour out, we can always return back to the place that sparks our joy. Hi. So the question, what sparks my joy? When I think of joy, it's more of a it's not something that happens, it's not a doing. It feels like a being. It feels like an opening up from the inside. And as you know, my passion is, is listening. And through the depth and the quality of my listening, I see the other person start to feel seen and heard and receive a knowing that they matter. Their eyes change, they light up, they smile. You're listening to me and I feel that joy. I feel the joy inside that my gift has been able to spark that joy in them. Thank you. You know, when the question about what brings me joy came up, it didn't take me more than a split second to have an answer. And that is people, the people in my life. I love being surrounded by good people and they, <laughs> even me, Yes, even you. Come on, you know there was a time. This guy. Where you struggled with this. There was a time where this guy drove me crazy. There was a time where I couldn't handle all of that. But you know what? Now, I'm okay with myself. So, when I think about the joy that is in my life, I have to include myself in that equation. When I think about people, it's about being okay with me in a, in a way that I never was before so that I can let people know, get to know me. Like I can give better to other people by being okay with myself and that has made my relationships better, not just with myself, not just with those that are closest to me, but with people from all over that I am meeting and getting to know in different ways. I can have a better conversation with a stranger in a coffee shop or a local cafe or brewery or restaurant because I'm approaching it from a place of acceptance of myself. 
So seeing you smile, hearing your success stories, laughing as we trip over roots in the forest or, you know, mis make mistakes along the way or think about the fun times that have happened or the things we've missed. That's such a joyful thing for me. And I hope for you that it's the same way. I hope that whatever it is that brings you joy, you are filling your life with. Because that's what it comes down to. Finding the thing that brings us joy and doing more of that. Leaning into it. And even if it's something that maybe it took a little while to find the joy in, like that over there, you can turn it into something beautiful. Hey there, I'm Eric. I'm Kim. And we're here to talk about what brings us joy. When I first heard the question, I was thinking about one particular, maybe two particular things that brought me joy. And then I realized it's not one or two things. It's you have to find joy in the small things every day, in your family, in your friends, in your loved ones. Right. And when I thought about it, I thought about, uh, you know, what is it that brings me joy? Is it vacations, my car, our house, or just what was it? And what I discovered was really, it was the little things, spending moments together. Yeah. So um, here's happy joy to all of you and uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. From Eric and Kim. Ideas spark my joy, and sometimes there's a slip of paper involved. There's a saying, if you have two loaves of bread, dare to sell one and buy a flower. If I've got my practical needs met, I'm going to sell one of those loaves of bread and buy a flower, whatever it takes to bring a smile to my lips. Could be flowers, could be art, could be goofing around and playing with folks of all shapes, sizes, ages, two-legged, four-legged. Could be listening and visiting with my daughter in her hospital room as we spoke of death and life. And there were tears of sadness and of joy. Could be doing Tai Chi outside in the snow. Could be listening to myself be listening to those at our friendship bench. In this way, joy meets me where I am. In the words of poet Rosemary Watola Traumer, I want a word that means okay and not okay. How the churning of opposite feelings weaves inside me as an incessant breeze, wordlessly takes me deeper inside ourselves, blesses us with paradox. What an idea. The conversation between the pessimist and the optimist. The pessimist, I believe 2024 is going to bring disaster. The optimist, I think it's going to bring flowers. <laughs> How can you believe that? Because I'm planting flowers. I have this slip of paper, and inside are seeds of flowers. I'm planting flowers. When we create the time to invest in joy, we'll inadvertently spread it wherever we can go. The world can use that. In the words of one of my grandkids' favorite songs, Skin a marinky dinky dink, skin a marinky do. I love you, and I do. I've never really um, paid attention to the word joy. Mind you, I would see the word, but not really paying too close attention to it as far as when it comes to feelings, 
And um, up until recently, a year ago, um, it just started to resonate more with me. And by that, I mean, for me personally, it's not a word that I use and just throw it around randomly. The word joy for me actually is coming from something that I might have experienced and the feeling that it left within my soul. So for me, the word joy is definitely a soulful word because it's it creates that feeling of peace and comfort. Yeah, I hope that's clear. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Temple Hayes, and years ago, I heard a story. A friend of mine said her mom's favorite story was that there was a man, and he was outstanding in his field. And someone said to him, Sir, what are, what are you doing? I've noticed you're standing out there. You've been there for a while. Then he said, Well, I'm outstanding in my field. Yeah, but, and... He said, well, I learned that in order to win the Nobel Peace Prize, I must be outstanding in my field. <laughs> I've always loved that story. And I love any story as a storyteller that has a component of humor and joy. To me, life can be so serious with its complexities and being a human being and the things that we face from time to time, that I am a strong component for joy. What I believe about joy is that the joy that you have in your heart and in your expression is fully equal to the pain and the challenges in which you have endured and you have walked through. Someone once asked Buddha, how did you get that laugh? And I'm sure he articulated it in a way that said, you know what? I laugh big because I've cried hard. I laugh big because I've cried hard. And so joy, to me, it's an acronym. Just open yourself. Just open yourself. So the more I open myself to experiences, to be loved, to know more, about my own humanity, the more easier it is for me to move from the me to the we, to be available, to be accessible. And so joy is a strong word and it calls forth a way of us being fully expressed as human beings. When you look at nature, the chirping of the birds, the vibrational songs of the creatures of the deep, there is a level of joy in nature is that each and every day holds within its container a new beginning of new possibilities. Someone said to me once, they saw me speak at Carnegie Hall and they got in touch with me and said, you know, what I noticed about you is the joy that you carry. How how do you do that? You're one of the most joyful people I've ever met. And my answer was, what I needed to learn in my life is that joy is independent and does not require us to be absence of sadness. It's not a way that we need to divide ourselves. Joy is the inclusion of sadness and sorrow. And that brings forth the joy that is coming from the heart. And that's what we've seen with so many people like the compassion of Mother Teresa, the conviction of Martin Luther King Jr. It's the energy of a great uh, speaker or teacher or healer is that they understand joy isn't the absence of anything. It's the embracing of everything. I'm going to say that again. Joy isn't the absence of anything. It's the ability to embrace everything. Thanks for your time and bless you on this amazing journey we call life. Hello, everyone. When I heard about the opportunity of submitting a video for JoyFest 360, I initially thought I would just wing it, but somehow the writer guy within me got the upper hand and I found myself making a few notes. So here we go. Not that many years ago, the question, what sparks your joy, would have elicited a very different response from me. I most likely would have made references to my wonderful children and then wife, followed closely by mentioning an accomplishment of some kind you know, the mountain climbed, degree or diploma achieved, or book published kind of answer. 
This is not to say that any or all of those don't still hold importance in some way. However, for this video and for the rest of my apparent life, such answers and their related behavior will no longer be adequate for me. For I've learned that when I make my joy dependent on something fleeting and apparently external, I make my joy conditional. The logic is simple, yet contains a profound lesson. If we need some thing to spark our joy, we often discover, sometimes painfully, that without that apparent thing, we feel joyless. In other words, the spark is gone and there is suffering. Here and now, which is the sweetest non-place to be, I have discovered that my greatest joy is felt when I am free of the conceptual me, the Art Russell guy that would need anything to be joyful. In this spiritual emptiness, there is the mysterious and absolute fullness of just being. In needing no thing to be joyful, I am full, brimming over with love and joy to share. In conclusion, I wish everyone, everywhere, the richness of awakening to their true self. Until that occurs, I wish you peace and wonderful health while you play, dance, love your families, go skinny dipping at midnight or midday, and enjoy climbing those faraway mountains with the diplomas on their peaks. And please, for God's sake, let's remember to love one another. Happiness is not a destination, it is a way of life. And you may be able to see that at the wooden plaque that is right behind me, because that is a motto I choose to live by on a daily basis. So much so that someone gifted me that plaque a few years ago. I am Liz Jones, I am a wellness consultant and coach, and yes, I help others live healthy, fulfilling lives, but it is something I practice on a daily basis. So in the morning, I ask myself, what is gonna make me feel good today? Then I include that into my day at some point. The other thing I do in the morning that helps me feel good is self-development and learning because I love to learn and grow. I'm always engaged in multiple courses that either extend my knowledge into something new or deepen my knowledge on what I already know. That then helps me grow personally, but I can share that with others and that helps them grow as well. And that feels pretty good. But on top, that gives me that daily sense of achievement and success and I get it in the morning. So it's like that dopamine hit before I've really started my day. The other thing I love to do is travel because again, that learning and growing is get to experience new cultures and new places. So going to see a new country can be amazing for the beautiful scenery and the beautiful things around us. Or it can be just simply the people I meet along the way. So even at an airport, it's amazing who you can meet and what experience you can have. The other thing I like to do every single day is take care of my body. So whether that's staying active with some weights in the gym or a yoga class, or just watching the foods I eat. When I feel good about myself, then of course my energy and my mood is higher. That radiates out onto my clients and of course anyone I meet along that journey. The last thing I'm gonna leave you with is about gratitude because it is one of my daily habits, but it's also the one thing that picks me up when I'm thrown a curveball. So in the morning I have a gratitude journal and I write down all the things I'm grateful for. But also, like I said, those curveballs, everybody at some point will have a time where they feel they've been hit with a negative moment. And of course, it's catching yourself so that your mood doesn't get affected. I use gratitude to change how I feel at that time. And it is certainly a superpower that I recommend you use. But being a superpower is not just for me, it's for you as well. So thank you from me and all of those involved for joining us on Joyfest and watching our videos. Have an amazing day. What sparks my joy? Little things, big things, and everything in between. 
One of the things I really enjoy is cooking with my husband. I love being his sous chef and he's really the main chef in the house. During COVID, we had quite a bit of downtime and weren't able to go to restaurants. So he learned how to cook and bake and grill and smoke on the barbecue and do all sorts of things beyond your normal um, chicken and, you know, beef meals. So let me show you one of the meals he made. Seafood etouffee, amazing. And one day he said, I feel like cheesecake. And so he made one and it turned out perfectly. We work magic in the kitchen together. Me as a sous chef and he is the main chef. And that's one of the little, little things that really sparks my, my joy. And these fur babies. I love coming home to them every day after a long day of work. Snuggling with them on the weekends, taking them for long walks playing with them, talking to them, watching their little shenanigans. They spark my joy. I'm also a writer, and my, one of my bucket list items is to have a published novel one day. Crime, true crime genre, which I'm working on. That brings me joy. I love my garden. Come with me, I'll show you. Here are some hibiscus that are quite a few years old. They're almost six feet tall now. An azalea. I love planting them. I love finding new, new floral arrangements to, to put in the ground during spring. I love mixing them up a little bit in the seasons. What can we put in for the fall? Got a beautiful gardenia that's just flourished with all the rain we've had recently. My caladium, elephant ears, and a new hibiscus. I love nature. I love being outside. I love listening to the rustle of the trees, the chirps of the birds. I like just being still and quiet. This is my favorite time of day, late evening, when the sun is just golden in the leaves and there's a quiet rustle. And here in the background, we live near a, uh, near a park and there's children playing. I love making an impact on the world. I get joy for making a difference with people, whether in my community, at my job, with my employees, wherever it may be, putting a smile on just one person's face, making a difference, sparks my joy. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm Ken. And we're here to make a short video about what brings us joy. I actually just finished my first book called White Heron, A Creation Story, and that is step one to my dream. Step number two is this road right behind us. We just purchased some land to create a retreat center our home and we're gonna teach classes on beer brewing and we're gonna tell everybody anything and everything about honeybees. And now we're getting ready to turn around and walk down the farm road to the clearing and show you where some of our activities are gonna take place. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Hang on. Hey, we're back. And by the way, it is super hot and humid today. So we're trying our best. Ah, uh, so right up here, is the clearing. And Ken's gonna show you where a few of our structures are gonna be located. Okay. Right back over here is where we're gonna have our house. And turning over this way, pan around. Oh, oh, there we okay, go. okay, I'm coming, I'm there coming. We, right over here <laughs> is most likely gonna be where we have our greenhouse. If not, it will be on the other side of the house. And if we pan over this way. I'm coming, I'm coming. We're gonna have on the other side of the house, it just depends on how things work out, um, our little bee house where you can go inside and see what the inside of a beehive looks like and see honeycomb, see bees in action. We'll have an observation hive in there so you can actually see bees at work in their house inside of our little house. And uh, 
We'll also have a greenhouse where we're gonna propagate mushrooms and all the herbs and spices that people would like to put in their food and learn how to do a little bit of gardening and show that green thumb that they may or may not have. And uh, we'll have the bee yard way, way over that way since most people are afraid of bees, but um, bees are a necessary part of our ecosystem. We'll also have a wood shop that we can do woodware as far as the bee work goes or other wood projects that people that are pretty handy and can use power tools will be able to do something in their spare time to relax. And if you give us just a few minutes, we're gonna be heading back to one of the bee yards and we'll let you see them live in action. Bye-bye. Hey, we're back and coming to you live from the bee yard. By the way, I just wanted you to know that my dream of owning a retreat center I've had for over 30 years. I've always wanted to help ordinary people overcome extraordinary circumstances through health and healing and nature. And by the way, one of nature's best remedies is honey and honey bees. Yep, and right over here, we have a bee yard that I've been working on for a few weeks. Uh, we have uh, nucleus colonies, which are the smallest colonies of bees I have all the way up to full-size production colonies like this one on the very end right over here. See, we have one deep brood body right here and three medium supers on top. We should be able to harvest 150 pounds of honey off of this colony this year, uh, which will help us as far as uh, uh, finances go with our farm. And we can get all the products that we want off of here to utilize uh, at farmer's markets for uh, bee products, candles, lip balm, pollen, honey, and we also can sell bees. <laughs> um, anywho, um, we should have probably about 50 colonies on this yard before this year is over, and we'll have another yard similar to this one over on our farm, which is about six miles due east of here, west of here, north of here, south of here. <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> so yeah, apparently it's all over. So thanks for sticking with us through the honey exchange. Oh, oh yeah. exchange a kiss there. Cool. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Let's make some mead. Oh, yeah. That'd be great, too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Hey, press stop. And I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river. I've got joy like a river in my soul. There are so many things that bring me joy in this life. One of them is singing. Truly, it's the expression of joy in itself, whether it be through singing, writing, speaking, art, service, the gift of being seen and heard and the gift of seeing and hearing, the gift of time and space, health, prosperity, gratitude, courage, indeed so very many things. What sparks my joy? Singing and dancing, dawn, yoga, deep breathing, a cat purr on my lap, hot bubble bath, candle relax tap, sparkly brooch and shoes, Tiffany blue, spring hope, a random gift of kindness to a stranger, a baby smiling, giggling in a manger, rose and lag lag oil, Daffodils, tulips, nurturing exotic plants, summer season, sea, sunshine, sand on my feet, marshmallow, a Sunday roast, Turkish delight to eat, my adult children and my work, autumn dreams, jazz funk, soul music, the rhythm of life, clean and tidy house, bold planting, a trip to the hairdressers, Twilight, moonlight candles on a warm evening, helping someone up, whatever the season, a 
factory rain, on a relaxed window while you sleep. Manicured hands, pedicured feet. Family, home, love and warmth. Homemaking, documentaries, birth. Mirrors, lights, fairy lights. Winter. Hot cups of tea in a duvet and breakfast in bed. A hug from an old friend. A Tibetan head. Massages. Watching a crackling fire. Prodding on a log. Snuggling cuddles. Adventure. Walks with a dog. Giving. Living. It can be more difficult to access joy as you mature if you let it. As success rises, life can knock and invoke wariness. Fear can replace joy due to lessons learned. Young, innocent joy does not only need to be reserved only for the young, if we allow it. Seeing others achieve their dreams, helping them, that sparks my joy. Lisa Clack. What sparks joy? So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what sparks joy for me. Sunshine, warm weather, getting outside, nature, wildlife, good friends, family, good friends that are like family, cool, interesting people, learning something new, seeing something come to life life. Being able to do what makes you happy. Good conversation and comfortable silences. Influencing an action, especially if it makes a difference. Making connections. I love when I connect two people that can help one another. I love that spark. The spark when I connect with others and I know they are my people. Immediate friendships. The joy and feeling of curiosity each brand new day brings. That's what's much joy for me. Love heals the heart when it's broken and done. Stronger than the wind, fire, earth, or sun. It moves our souls, it takes the blame, it holds our wounds, removes our shame. Love rules the world and everyone within. It can never defeat love, love always wins. than hate It can tear down walls Love is a bomb It heals us all For the broken and scared When all is lost Love is a force That has no cost It rules the world
with mine You're not alone It ends the war When it marches in It's the driving force It's your chosen kin It won't give up When time wears thin You can never defeat love Love always wins You can never defeat love What brings me joy is anytime I can get outside and be in nature. So whether I just need uh, to renew my spirit or just uh, have a better day, being anywhere in nature, whether sunshine or rain, that's the best. Hello everyone. My name is Cindy and I wanted to share my moment of joy with you. It's called Tiny Garden Glance. Red soil would call upon our soul. Travel south we would to find our hole. The rock formations were magical there, grasping from the earth to air. Memory snap to life with each pose, magnificent highs to unprepared lows. We traveled along many mountain peaks, had barbecued beef and enjoyed the creeks. Those drifts as snow sweep in and out, fond memories compile without a doubt. Joyful moments, once tucked away, are brought to life again today. Thank you. Have a wonderful year. Joy is such a magical energy because it uplifts and expands absolutely everyone that it touches. Joy is one of those foundational energies that can support you through the darkest of times. So what brings me joy? Well, my family and friends, and the work that I adore. But beyond that, the things that bring me joy, that help sustain me through every moment, are the simple things. The way that nature interacts within itself, showing us that all are supported and loved equally, like the hummingbird drinking nectar from the flower, or the grass and trees and flowers that grow effortlessly, but bring so much beauty and treasure into the world. Or perhaps it's the children shrieking with joy at the playground, or my neighbors saying hello. No matter what it is, that brings more good into the world, I am grateful for it. And I am sustained by the joy of the beauty and the harmony that exists around me. But I also understand that joy is a part of love, part of the unconditional love and acceptance that we can offer to each other. So I invite you now to join me in creating joy by sharing love and acceptance with all. So what sparks joy in me? Thank you, Dennis, for posing this question to us here, Biz Catalyst 360. I look forward to seeing everyone's uh, inspiration. So I wanted to share my, what sparks my joy? I'm out in my happy place. What sparks joy in me is a walk in the woods, a walk on the beach, somewhere out in nature. When I get out in nature, I can clear my head, release all the tasks, all the hustle and bustle, the chaos, the challenges, the struggles, and connect to my source, God, and the beautiful 
beautiful world he gave us. And when I'm out in nature, I can actually see everything effortlessly orchestrated. There's no one saying, okay, river flow, uh, birds chirp. It just happens. And it really reaffirms to me that there is something greater than myself, that I am part of something greater than myself. And I get recentered, realigned, recalibrated to what is truth. Not all my problems, not all my challenges, not all my struggles, not all my daily tasks, but connection, clarity, and calm that comes from my spark of joy, which is being out in nature. Thanks so much. Hi everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you to Dennis uh, for the invitation to take part in his uh, third production uh, about joy. Uh, I think ultimately the thing that makes me feel the most amount of joy uh, is a bit of a cliche really, but it's just spending time with uh, my family, uh, doing the things I love with the people I love. Uh, just the other day, I have a four-year-old son who's uh, mad keen on toy trains, Thomas the Tank, I'm a bit of a British institution, uh, things like that. So we spent most of the morning, one, one morning uh, about a week ago, just building this huge elaborate track in his bedroom that had two levels, uh, loops and twists and bends. And uh, we were probably there for a good two hours, I would say. And just the, the look of joy on his little face uh, brought a smile to my face and I thoroughly enjoyed spending time with him doing that. I've got a nine-year-old daughter who's just taken uh, a liking to golf, which is great. And uh, so we went out the range the other day. Uh, I bought her a half set of clubs for her ninth birthday. And uh, yeah, we went to the range and she hit this ball with her driver for the first time. It carried 78 yards and the look of joy on her face when, when uh, yeah, when she made connection and she watched it on the uh, on the tracker, carried 78 yards and she was ecstatic. And so was I, because I was spending time with her, sharing a sport that I that I love, and now I can hopefully pass on a little bit of knowledge uh, to her. But if she carries on the way she's going, I think she'll be uh, surpassing my handicap for sure. And uh, obviously, spending time with my wife, uh, I'm here in the middle of the night now, doing the graveyard shift at work, uh, in my car, uh, recording this before I forget, so I don't spend as much time with her as, I, as, as I'd like. But I do know that when we are together, where we do, we do uh, <laughs> have a laugh and a joke, and uh, yeah, just enjoy the, the simple things, really. It might be, you know, breakfast, a cup of coffee at a coffee house, things like that. Um, and that's when it strips down to the bare skin and bones. I think that's the, uh, that's the thing we enjoy most really. Just the three, the four of us, I should say, um, spending good quality time together, creating memories. I think that's what gives me, yeah, the most amount of joy. Okay. Thanks again. Hopefully you'll be in the next one. All the very best. Thanks. Cheers. Joy. Let's add a little joy to our lives. I make a point of doing this on a regular basis. I am excited to share with you that I find joy in a lot of different places, in people, in small moments and big things. Some of the things that bring me joy include seeing my boys get along well and do good things in the world. I love to dance. I love to help other people. I love adventures, doing crazy things out in the world to press my comfort zone a little bit so that I can share those messages out into the world. I love working with people like the people here at Biz Catalyst because they've got it, they've got it down, they're doing it right. They're expanding humanity and that, that's a big part of what brings me joy as well. So let's do it together. We can't all do it alone, right? Let's do it together. Take care. What sparks my joy? One of the things that sparks my joy is great questions and 
And this is a great one. I, I, I find many things joyful, and for the things I don't find joyful, I, I try to create joy in them in so, some way. Um, like, like preparing taxes or going, going to the dentist. I try to create jo- joy in that because it needs to be done. But I think the things that that sparks my joy the most is is being allowing myself to be, to be me and be happy with that. For years, I didn't like the sound of my my voice. I have a speech impediment, so I I walked around ashamed and and wishing I had been born without a a birth injury. But now that I I clean the sound of my voice and I I enjoy it whether I'm speaking to one person or thousands of people it it, it, it gives me happiness. And I also find joy in doing things I love to do. Whether they are traditional or more unique. Like yesterday, I went for a, a day and evening drive and went to to lots of small towns over 10 and, and took photos of things I, I loved. I went by myself, but I just had the best time. Oh, I, I, I love feeling joy joyful so I try to find as joy find joy in as many things that as I can even though life is often challenging I I try and find joy in the challenges hello everyone today I would like to share a precious moment from my childhood, a moment that had a profound impact on my life and my journey as a writer. Once when I visited my grandfather's Nanaji's home, too young to remember the exact age, I guess I must be around 7 to 8 years old. As always, I was eagerly anticipating to hear stories and wisdom he always had to share. Little did I know that this visit would be etched in my heart forever. My Nanaji gifted me a Parker's pen, a symbol of elegance and craftsmanship, and asked me to write the name of Lord Ram 108 times. I smiled and started writing. Once I finished, he said, Aditi, as a messenger, You will always be receiving ideas and feelings. So start recording your inspiration in a diary. Write, just write, no matter how far-fetched or insignificant it seemed. This exercise will not only birth creative ideas in you, but will also help you become a better version of yourself. When we reflect, we see things which we may miss out on in routine course of life. I was too young to understand its significance then, but now I realize it held a deeper meaning. I consider this pen as his blessing on me to become a writer. Now this pen has become more than just a writing instrument for me. It's a symbol of love and guidance. I feel the presence of my Nanaji with me as I hold this pen. My Nanaji had a unique way of imparting wisdom. He never forced or scolded or shouted or criticized anyone. He simply lovingly put his point forward, giving everyone the grace to learn at their own pace. If anyone needed help or support, he was the first one to help. I would like to share here that my Nanaji, Dr. Rameshwar Das Maheshwari, was an orthopedic surgeon. 
whose altruism knew no bounds. His life was always about serving those in need. With his steady hands and compassionate heart, he performed surgeries that transformed lives. He not only removed horns from the human skull, but also provided prosthetic limbs to numerous people free of charge. Coming back to the simple act of writing, I remember whenever I used to write anything meaningful, he used to appreciate a lot and looked at me with a sense of pride and joy. Till today, whenever I embark on something important, whether it's uh, starting a new chapter in my life or in a significant project, I use this pen for an auspicious time. It gives me the confidence that my analogy is with me. Every time I pick up this pen, I cherish one of the most dearest memories and it fuels my passion for creating, beauty and writing. It's amazing how a simple gesture can shape the, our destinies. I thank this catalyst for giving me the opportunity to share my treasured memory with you all. Remember, sometimes the most ordinary moments can carry extraordinary blessings. Thank you. Hi dear friends, this is Inika Kanhai from the Netherlands. What an honor and joy it is to be part of this great joy fest 360. Thank you so much, Dennis. Joy starts always with a smile for me. With great pleasure and gratitude, I want to share with you my gift of joy. Come and join me to this very special place for me, which brings me great joy. Being near water brings me always much joy. Just listening to the water and looking at every ripple I can in humble awareness that I am part of this wonderful thing called life. But the ultimate joy for me is the joy of freedom, true freedom. Not only reading or hearing about it, but standing here and experiencing deep joy of freedom. Starting a new beginning, experiencing great joy in just being myself, wanting and doing anything I desire and deserve in life. For me, Nothing can beat the joy of freedom. Thank you, dear friends. Love and greetings from the Netherlands. What brings me joy? The sun on my face. The whisper of spring. Spring flowers. The birds. And then I got thinking, you know, what really is important to me and what brings me joy is my circle. These people, these humans that are diverse and from all over the world that align with me. That's what brings me joy. Namaste. Look. It's snowing again. <laughs> Yay. I think I'm the only one here who likes it. <laughs> I don't care. It's snowing again. It's so pretty, see? It's so pretty. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura Gray, and I have been asked by my friends at Biz Catalyst to share what sparks my joy. And um, sparks like joy are awesome words and I think for me what sparks my joy is love uh, love is the eternal igniter and uh, so when I see it in that light what brings love into my life and into my heart uh, my sons my family being in nature uh, hearing the birds the birds actually wake me uh, at five in the morning and I just you know to be outside and to hear that song every morning, regardless of the day or the weather. Um, just being barefoot, hugging a tree, smelling nature, being of service to others um, is just, just such a feeling. And 
yes, it sparks my joy, but truly what lights that flame for me is love. And uh, yeah, love. Life is a journey, isn't it? Filled with twists and turns and some pretty unexpected detours. But amidst all that chaos, the one thing that remains constant is joy. And for me, that joy is often sparked by spending time with my family. There's just something magical about connecting with people who share my blood and my history. It's in the laughter of my grandson or the stories shared around the dinner table or cups of coffee, or just getting a really good hug from somebody who knows me inside and out. And that kind of joy is not limited to DNA. You know, I like to expand my family, welcome those new additions with welcoming open arms, whether through marriage or friendships or just those seemingly random connections that grow into so, so much more. That kind of joy is absolutely limitless. And for me, happiness is not just a fleeting emotion. It's a core value. It's something that really illuminates my life, reminding me to find the pleasure in the everyday moments and cultivate true meaningful gratitude for those amazing experiences and spread kindness everywhere. So as you journey through this wacky thing we call life, I hope that for you, joy is also a constant companion. Because those moments are everywhere. They're just waiting to be discovered. In the laughter of loved ones, in the sparkle of new adventures, and just in the simple pleasures that come with being alive. And whether you find the tiniest of sparks or humongous bonfires of joy, I hope you're able to savor each and every one of them because believe me, they're worth it. A true heart of joy. One winter's day I saw the river turn into bloom, ice flowers decorating the swirling waters, dressed in crystals and glass. If there ever was a cold heart, they could not stay thus for long, for the secret of the frost was that it too was made of water, and the dance of nature never stayed in one place and always chose a new and truer shape. When you are connected to source energy, 
when source flows through you and from you, there is joy. It is the song of your soul. I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got that joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart to stay. Be filled with joy. Be joyful. Hi, my name is Dana Sardano, and this is Angela DeMarco, and we're here with Going Commando with Angela and Dana, and we just want to share a little bit of our joy with you today. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening to our little spiel here. Um, you know, the greatest thing that brings me joy is definitely my children, that they are watching the world through their eyes. It's absolutely amazing. I have an 18 year old in college and I have a five year old who is just, it, their perspectives are amazing. Um, and then the other thing I get that, that really, really brings me joy is being able to do our podcast together with this beautiful woman to my left or right, wherever we're on editing and, uh, and just getting to hang out with my best friend every day. Like that's what my job is is being creative and um, getting to hang out with Dana every day and then experiencing life through my children's eyes. Like it's just, it's just beyond. I really want to be the person that says my children bring me joy and the joy is in the journey and all that profound stuff. But really, <laughs> it really brings me joy. What really brings me joy is having created a life that gives me the opportunity to create, have a good time, have laughs, um, make my own hours, hang out with you every day, Angela. Oh my God. Um, just really giving me the freedom to appreciate the world around me. And by having that freedom and seeing the world through the eyes of, um, of a free woman, um, I'm living in a consistent state of joy. And, and for that, I'm super grateful. Angela, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for our life. I'm grateful for going commando with Angela and Dana.com. <laughs> and, <I'm sorry. laughs> and, uh, and we love to share it with all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> this is joy. This with is my, joy. With my friends. So what brings me joy? Sunshine, nature, friendship, uh, community this is this is the epitome of joy exactly and then having a friend across the pond to come and visit us that's a joy and for me like joy is friendship community love freedom connectedness just being present to amazing humans like this that's joy yes and so what a joy this is to share this with you all exactly bye thank you bye what sparks my joy? So many things, it's hard to summarize it. But maybe the flowers behind me can say it for me. Every morning, this particular bunch has been here every morning for two weeks now. And Every morning they tell me, even though they've been cut off from their roots, from their nourishment, and they will not last much longer, they are celebrating the beauty of their lives. This is my inspiration. Being joyful means waking up in the morning and breathing a beautiful, life-giving air straight from the lungs of the universe and knowing that I and all of creation are love. It makes me happy whenever I think of it and I think of it often because there are other things in life that are demanding, and difficult, and scary, but this is the bedrock of my life, that I'm loved, that everyone is loved, that we're all part of this one living being we call the earth, 
even our bodies are made from the earth. And so it's there as a living spark every single moment of my life on this planet. And I do hope and look forward to it. sharing that spark with all beings when I leave this earth. And another thing that gives me great joy is when people can read my poetry and get in touch with their own joy. My name is Suzanne. This right here, being outside, sparks my joy. I'm painting for a project that I'm getting ready to do. It's a premiere project for the first time ever in this county. It has to do with voices of survivors. It's sparking joy because I am meeting so many different people. I am getting to write. I am getting to do art, but it's not about me. It's about the connections. It's about the people who are sharing their stories. It's about people meeting each other in person, online, and sharing. And that is what sparks my joy. It also sparks my joy to be outside. It's been a little bit of a gray winter up here in the lower Catskills of New York. And today we actually got out of the frozen zone. So that's also sparking my joy. The other thing that's sparking my joy is my family. Today, I am getting ready to go to a storytelling competition. I've never done a storytelling comp competition. I'm getting out of my comfort zone, as well as this video, because I don't often record videos. So thank you for push, pushing me to do so. I am experiencing joy, a little bit of trepidation, but I am looking forward to telling the story. The theme of the storytelling is hope. So when Liberty Rotary knew about the theme, at the table, everyone turned to me. I became the de facto spokesperson sharing a story that I've never shared before in public of how I was named. So joy brings me full circle. Family, friends, sharing, connecting, a little bit out of my comfort zone and the beautiful weather that we're having today. Thanks so much. Have a great day, and may you have joy too. Hello there. My name's Danny. I'm the older brother of Dennis. Uh, and I'm proud to call him my brother. And uh, he came up with this idea of uh, asking folks, what's joy? And I thought that was a pretty good question to ask, and it gives me pause to reflect upon joy in my life. I can basically say it's somebody to love, somebody who loves me, and something to look forward to every day. It's just like that. Back when we were little and it was almost Christmas and there were presents underneath a tree and one has your name on it, and you're just anxious. You can't wait for Christmas morning to open that present. and to see what surprise that you were going to receive. Uh, and joy comes like that every day in an unwrapped present that we get to wrap or unwrap. I <laughs> see it's giving to others too, wrapping a present, giving them uh, something to look forward to enjoy, but also receiving joy through presence of others. It's not something material. It could be just a sense of knowing you matter in someone's life and letting them know that they matter in your life. That's joy. Uh, it can be emotional. Uh, it can be physical. Uh, for me, it's the presence of God. Uh, I know that everything I possess in this life comes from Him. And I'm thankful and I'm grateful. I pray for others that they could 
find that same joy and that they have that relationship with God. Uh, I know that there'll be a joyous reunion when I'm called home. And uh, what a wonderful time that would be. I'll be in the presence of God and family and friends and have all eternity to you know, play baseball, <laughs> double headers, uh, have ice cream, not get fat, uh, laughter, love, no tears or fears or pain. Wow, that's just almost unimaginable. Until though, or until then that happens, I kind of think about the movie The Blues Brothers. Jake and Elroy, they tell people they're on a mission from God. Now their mission was to put the band back together. A wonderful movie, a lot of music, and a lot of really great musicians within the uh, movie. But I take from that that we're all on a mission from God. Whether you believe in him or not, we're on a mission. Uh, and I know we're almost invulnerable when we are until our mission's complete. That doesn't mean we do stupid things or tempt God or jump off buildings or out of airplanes or run in traffic. It just means we do what he asks us to do and he puts that upon our heart. Uh, and... We do it. it. We're not perfect. It may not always work out the way we would plan. But you know, when we're down to nothing, God is always up to something. So that's joy uh, for me. And uh, I think about that every day. I had a pastor teacher at one time uh, that said, Danny, uh, think of your life as a glass of water. A glass of water? Yeah. The more you pour yourself out, the more you let God in. That's a really neat analogy. And it's basically dying to self and living for others. What are the two greatest commandments? Love God, love your neighbor. It comes down to that. I know in my past career of 40 some years in police work, a lot of that wasn't happening. And I know that I was destined to be a police officer, a detective, special agent, whichever agency I was with at the time, and I was doing God's work. You never get into police work for the money or the fame. <laughs> you really, really don't. And it's only through the grace of God that I had a wonderful career. And now... I celebrate a, a very happy retirement uh, in the idea that I served and now my mission from God is different to do other things. But most importantly, love God, love my wife, love my family, and do things for others. Not because I expect any payback, but to the light, the heart of God, whether it's through compassion, sharing, just hearing someone, letting them know they matter and they're important. That's joy. God bless. It's me, joy. I'd like to say helping people discover their authentic selves, discovering their uniqueness, reconnecting accepting and embracing who they really are. And the reason this gives me joy is because throughout our lives, we're told that our identity is associated with what we do and what we have. And if life takes that away from us, we feel lost. The way to think and function in life is we are who we are, our authentic self, due to which we do what we do, and we have what we have. That's what brings me joy. My greatest joy is my, uh, are my daughters, and now my grandchildren. 
Uh, when my daughters were born, I was a very senior high tech executive. I traveled extensively and I was gone a couple weeks uh, out of every month for the first few years of their life. Uh, my mother left the family and I then had full custody of my two daughters at, uh, at a young age. And while I thought this was going to be the most difficult experience of my life and I didn't know if I could handle it, uh, they were the ones who got me through it. And being with them as a single father was the best experience of my life, spending time with them, getting to know them, doing things together with them. Um, was without, without question the, the greatest uh, experience of life, without question. Uh, one is married now, we have, uh, I have two grandchildren, and I have that same joy in being with them that I did in being with my daughters. So the highlight for my life is to uh, spending time with them, going to uh, their house, come having them come to my house, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. What I thought was going to be one of the worst experiences in my life turned out to be, by far, without question, the best. And that's my joy. When we were young, and the wind told us stories, Purple flowers in your hair Our skin alive Where our body meets the air Will you dance with the waves With anyone who is brave enough to ask you Jade, a simple prayer. When you look us in the eyes, burgundy and indigo and every other color, trying on so many roles, trying to discover the meaning of those secret months, but never seeming to be done of who I am and why do we suffer now this garment that we wear it fits we grew like the colors in your hair will you sit with the dead with anyone who has no need to rush you Your faith is your protection Your faith is your protection
What sparks my joy? Hi, I'm Zen Benefiel, and my joy is sparked just for the opportunity to share with you how wonderful life is for me and with all of the people that are in it, my beautiful twin flame Luba as my wife, and the opportunities presented by Biz Catalyst to enjoy others and participate in the friendship bench. Life is just so wonderful. Spending time in nature, like in the picture that's behind me, is something, it's a picture I took years ago that is a favorite place of mine in Northern Arizona that I spent a lot of time with. And nature provides so much. If we just get out and spend time in it, it's the joy that we've been longing for of connecting ourselves with the earth, with nature, and with our lives so that we may live more fully in that joy with others. And I invite you to be that, to find some space, to visit nature, find friends, enjoy their company. And I, for one, can speak to the evidence of the joy that that brings. To love and be loved is the ultimate reward in this life. So find your joy, live it, be it. And I encourage you to take whatever risks you can in those areas of fear that you may have, step through them and find the joy that's just on the other side of it. Thank you. May we all soar in 24. Hi, uh, this is uh, Eileen and Trevor and uh, we just want to share that for us, joy is all about uh, seeing other people happy. With some of the things that we do, we get the, uh, the pleasure of making somebody's dream come true, uh, getting their uh, music out there in the world. Uh, many times uh, we're filming that music or recording that music. And when they uh, see the final results, we do get to see a lot of joy. Yes, and we get a lot of thank yous and happiness from people that uh, we give them a platform with all the things that we do that um, they may not otherwise be able to experience. And that gives us joy. And through that, we're able to um, enjoy our life and uh, have fun doing the things that we love to do and that are, are good for other people as well. So it can be pretty joyous watching somebody else get extremely happy yes oh absolutely absolutely and then of course uh, you know we're living in our gypsy wagon living the gypsy lifestyle and um, it's just nice to be able to walk out into nature and have that morning coffee uh, out on the front porch and uh, and just be able to enjoy life from a natural uh, perspective Another thing, a uh, source of joy for us is watching the accomplishments of NASA and SpaceX. We're right across the uh, Indian River Lagoon uh, from Cape Canaveral. So uh, we get to see a lot of happy people here in the campground down at the shore uh, watching these incredible rockets take off. Yes, so we feel very fortunate that we're able to uh, live life on fearlessly, as we like to say, and to the fullest and um, on purpose. You know, we're purposeful with how we uh, uh, reach out to others and how we choose to uh, live our daily lives. So if we leave you with anything today, it's find the joy in life, uh, you know, engage in the things that bring you joy and happiness. And, uh, you know, this, I like to say this isn't a trial run. Uh, this is the one life you have to live, so live it, live it to the fullest. And as Eileen's coffee cup says. <laughs> Making memories one campsite at a time. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye. What brings me joy, you might ask? 
My name is Peggy and I have been in the health and wellness business for a very long time and worked with many people. And what has always brought me joy is helping people help themselves, whether it was personal growth or whether it was losing a hundred pounds or working through a difficult relationship. Through my decades of working with human beings, that is what's brought me joy. And in the last few years, I've been working with lots of authors, whether they are contributing authors to my books or helping other authors get their books, stories, and blogs out there. Lots of people, and what really truly brings me joy in the last couple of years is carefully and compassionately holding their stories. As I say to them, I got you and we can do this. And cathartically by telling your story, you're gonna do a disservice if you don't share your story and connect with other people. Cathartically, it's going to help you work through whatever trauma or discovery, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter, heart, spirit, mind, and body. When we tell stories, you guys, that's where my true joy is, is watching them work through it and then ultimately being able to say, hey, write like somebody's gonna read it, but also write like nobody's gonna read it. And that being said, that you're doing it for yourself, yes, but you're doing it in hopes that one person somewhere in the world will read your story or pick up your blog and connect with it, and it'll reframe their mind or sometimes save lives. I have stories that that has happened. So for me, the reason that I have this flag behind me today is I interviewed somebody who works with the homeless veterinarians and um, veterinarians, vets. <laughs> and what is so joyful for me is to be able to realize, you know, we don't know what we don't know, right? And I love the fact that we have freedom and we can learn more information and we can help each other. We just have to take that step, read an article, have a conversation, watch a YouTube video. And whether you need to learn more about homelessness or how to run a government in a foreign country or a new recipe, I believe that connecting with others and sharing your stories will bring you some joy too. That's what I think. Hi, I'm Kathy Caswell and I live in Halifax here on the Atlantic coast of Canada. And I love the topic of sparking joy. So thank you, Dennis. I certainly enjoy spending my time here at the lake at my home, whether that is watching the sun dip beneath the trees before the sky lights up at night or reading a book in the shade of the old pine tree on a hot summer day. And while this special place offers me many joyful moments, I'd like to share a little perspective on what sparks my joy. And so for me, for many years, I struggled my time to relax here at the lake. I was simply too busy. I had places to go, people to see, work to get done. And although the lake was here every day, I often wished that I just simply had more time to enjoy it. I didn't really recognize that I was operating on autopilot. Everything was important and I had these ingrained beliefs that really drove a lot of reactive behavior. And so I knew my belief was that I needed to work really hard and really fast. I had a belief that I should do more even when I was already doing a lot. I had a belief that I was responsible for doing that all. The work, the parenting, the volunteering, and if there was a job to be done, I often did it automatically without even pausing to consider maybe if someone else could do it or if I had a choice to do it. And so over time, this, these beliefs were wearing me down because everything just kept getting busier. I operated in a mode of work hard, play hard. And then if someone suggested that perhaps I could slow down and relax a little, I reacted. I got a little snappy. And I thought, do they not know how busy I am? I would love to simply enjoy life, but the work has to get done first. Well, no surprise, the work never really did get done. So what shifted for me? Well, about 10 years ago, by chance, I was introduced to a new way to shift energy in these old beliefs. 
know, these old beliefs that served me well in the past, but they were now keeping me stuck in these really stressful patterns. And they were also getting in the way of what mattered most, my relationships with my family, with my coworkers. And so I started using this new way to shift energy called logosynthesis. And I am so thankful that I did. So what I would say is that what sparked my joy is shifting the energy and these old beliefs, beliefs are, that are no longer true anymore. And when my energy is free, it allows me to be present, to enjoy special moments right where I'm at. And I love it when it is right here at the lake. So what would make your day? Oh my god! sparks my joy well I want to thank Dennis for doing this because just that question alone sparks my joy when I was first asked or given the invitation to do this I thought about that so I could figure out what to say and even doing the dishes just that question in my head what sparks my joy brought a smile to my face because there are so many things in life that do spark my joy. Kindness to other people, being able to give somebody a compliment that needed it that day, telling people how much they mean to me, doing something nice for somebody that didn't expect it, um, music, um, nature, there's so many things about life. Family, colors, so many things that can spark my joy, my dreams, my connection with other people. There's just so much about life that can spark your joy. And it starts from having peace and happiness inside you. It doesn't matter what's going on in the world around you. If you have it in your heart and you listen to your soul, it'll show you what things can spark your joy. Like the sun shining through the window or just feeling it on your face and the birds singing when you go for a walk. There's so much about life that if we take the time just to hear it, just to pause and feel it, we'll know what sparks our joy. And I hope you find it too, every day. Thank you. My name is Melody Bellevue. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> Hello, my name's Rob. I'm from Southampton, England. I get most joy from seeing family, um, being with this new member of the family, Mogul, and this current member of the family, Fleur. And I think that's it. Oh, and my wife. Thanks. Oh, Gina. Onum roti kam kalai. 
Onure kam ke duru Ma meten kam ko yesu o jem ni Ah yesu Oh ah yesu Ah yesu Mabu na wangu to talk about joy. It's one of my favorite topics of all time because joy comes from a special place in my life. And yes, I love to dance. I love to sing. I love to write. I love to paint. I love people. But all of that love, all that joy in those things comes from one incredible source in my life. And that is Jesus Christ. His unconditional love for me, no matter what I am, what I do, and, and how I do it, 
is what gives me that solid base of joy to share with neighbors, to share with nations, to share with anyone who's willing to receive it. And that spark has led me to do many things that I never I could I never thought I could do. Um, it's led me to places where I didn't think I'd find any joy, and yet there it was. I just had to look harder for it sometimes. And yes, there are valleys in our lives, but at the end of the day, joy always does come in the morning if we're willing to look for it, wait for it, and accept it. So I just want to encourage uh, those that may be watching that joy is a real thing. And in this world today, we need more of it. And if I can't find it, I'm going to be it. So uh, six decades into my life, I'm just getting started. And I want to thank everyone for the Joy Project. Uh, excited to be part of that. And I hope and pray that maybe this has been a spark of joy in someone else's life. Because you're valuable, you're worthy. And I just wanted to share my little piece of what sparks my joy. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where down in my heart? Where down in my heart? I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where down in my heart to stay? I got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where down in my heart? Where down in my heart? I got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where down in my heart to stay? You know the devil doesn't like it, Jesus, down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. You know the devil doesn't like it, Jesus, down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I hope you have joy in your heart as well. Hello, I'm Mandy from Southampton, England in the United Kingdom. Um, this video is about what gives me joy. Um, some of the things that give me joy are my family, um, having quality time with them, my friends, um, seeing friends that live near and obviously far, far away. Um, but when, when you meet up with the friends, the sense of joy that you feel is absolutely amazing. Um, also, I get joy from doing things that I like doing, which could be something simple, um, walking my dog. I get joy from my home. I just get joy from different things on a day-to-day -day basis. It might be that 
you see something really simple um, and it makes you it makes you feel great especially sometimes when you you just might help somebody in a supermarket you might help them a little old lady reach something off a shelf that's pretty high up but it just gives you not only a sense of joy but just a, a sense that you've, you've been nice it's nice to be nice um, and that gives me joy seeing nice places gives me joy lovely scenery I get joy from going on holiday and spending time with my loved ones and just on a day-to-day -day basis just smiling sometimes well that's just a little sum up and that's me signing off. Bye. In the sweet by and by I see a gold that won't lose shine Won't lose shine Hallelujah, I'll fly away with you, and maybe we'll find the higher we climb, it's clear in the blue, I'll fly away. And on the deep rolling sea There is a heart that knows no bounds It knows no bounds And at the end of my strain There is a song that still Yes, I feel the rain coming again And it washes my shame Removes all my pain I feel the rain again Oh, I
fly away with you. My father used to say, "Do whatever, but make yourself happy." Yourself. My name is Arupati Chaji. I'd like to ask for a few minutes of your time to share my thoughts on Joy Festival 360 2024. I start off by quoting a very famous person. He used to say, "Service to others is the rent you pay." For your room here on Earth, and he used to prove it time and time again as a role model. And he said further on, "The more we help others, the more we help ourselves." And I noticed that's so true. I want to make myself happy. I do my best to make others happy. The last thing he used to say was, "Don't count the days. Make the days count." How true is that? So please, I ask you, for Joy Festival 360 2024, what would you do to make yourself happy? Thank you very much. God bless. Bye. What sparks your joy? Wow, that's a loaded question. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to do this. As I have very few chances without an iPhone, and uh, not too great with technology, but when I asked myself the question, "What sparks your joy?" the first thing that came to mind was that old song about joy to the world, all the boys and girls, joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea, joy to you and me. That was my first take. And then the second one was the song I heard as a child, which was the joy, 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 joy down in your heart. Anybody know that one? Well, and then I got to thinking, you know, joy, that's exactly it. It does start right down there in your heart. There's songs, there's psalms, there's so many things that joy is part of. So. The joy of the Lord being my strength, and starting out my day in the morning, I had to actually go with the idea also that coffee would be one of my greatest joys because that is how I start my day. And a cup of coffee, a simple cup of coffee, gives me so much joy to start my day. Also, uh, going forward with that, a cheery disposition. Is not a bad thing either, you know, because it can help you adjust to any type of weather. And is it fair to say that joy pumps up positivity? Every day allows for opportunities for joy. It's contagious. It's like writing your first book. It's like going on a nature walk. It's like being with friends who bring out the best in you and sharing your joy and laughter. It's like that person that walks in a room and fills the room with joy, just vibrates. If what about pets? Do pets not bring a lot of joy? Holding a baby for the first time, holding your grandchild in your arms for the first time, joy, joy is energy, joy is a feeling, joy is healing. It's like sprinkling. On the top of your ice cream cone, the sparkle in your eyes when you fall in love, igniting fireworks, exploding in the moonlit sky. Joy is my amusement park in life. You can find it within. You can find it without. It's a blue sky. It's the dance of a butterfly. Joy is the other side of sorrow. It's hope in tomorrow. And having said that, let's all spread joy like jelly on a piece of bread. And I use quite a bit. Thank you.
joy. Joy means so many different things to so many different people. I'm going to speak about joy and what it means for me, especially within the workplace, professionally. I have a quote that says, count the smiles and the KPIs will take care of themselves. Just think about that for a moment. A smile is an indicator of joy for me, accompanied by warmth in my heart. When you're in the workplace, you look forward to Monday mornings getting back to work and raring to go. You grab the week by the scruff of the neck because you cannot wait. You are so excited. That is joy. Joy is skipping into work when everybody else is on a slow walk. Joy is lighting up when you see your colleagues lighting up with a smile. Joy is smiling automatically and naturally when somebody else smiles. You share their joy and you bring joy to others. The ripples go on and on as they pay it forward. Joy is that feeling that you know that you've made when you've made a difference to somebody in that moment. I've worked with so many. Some don't speak English. Others are non-verbal. But one thing that speaks volumes is the power of a smile. When you smile or they smile, you know that you're doing something right and you continue and it brings more smiles and they spread on. Joy is when your heart feels warm, knowing that you've made that difference. So let smiles and happiness be your top KPI in the workplace, because after all, what is life without joy? <laughs>